Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10. The absence of a genuine encounter with Jesus is one of the first reasons why we have this level of decadence that is in the similitude of Ezekiel's vision. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. Verse 9. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Can I be honest with you? It is not everything you believe about Jesus that equals salvation. There are specific things you have to believe about Jesus to be saved. Believing Jesus is a good man does not save you. Believing Jesus is a founder of an honorable religion does not save you. There are specific details about Jesus. You must believe in him crucified. You must believe he died. You must believe he rose again for our justification. You must believe today he is seated at the right hand of the father. If you do not believe this, you are not a Christian. It's as honest and sincere as that. We may differ, denominationally speaking, across different schools of thought. We may differ um, across several things, I understand. But it is in this one thing that we cannot allow ourselves to differ. Because if we lose the revelation of this, there is no Christianity again. Here and there we may argue, we may disagree with one another across certain doctrinal issues. That's all right. But on this one thing, anyone who names the name of Christ must agree that this is the formula for salvation. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the lordship of Jesus and then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible declares thou shalt be saved even if you fall down under the anointing and stand up and you don't confess this, you are not saved. You had a powerful service, but you are not saved. Can I be sincere with you? It's important we have to be sure of the admission process again. How there are all kinds of inventions as to this Jesus thing and while we are a people of love it is important that we preserve the destiny of a generation by reminding us again that everything starts with Jesus more than preacher more than apostle Joshua Selman Jesus Jesus listen keep quiet and listen carefully Jesus Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So from my heart, to the heavens, Jesus be the center. 
It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Listen to me. The more you know God, I tell you the truth, the more you will not even want to be the one seen. The formula is that I may decrease so that you will increase. The obsession to be known is proof we have not encountered the God of the Bible. Believe me when I tell you this. Listen, many of you here are medical doctors. There is a way you look at a patient and certain attributes in that patient show the deficiency of certain vitamins. You can look at the patient and know immediately with pin drop accuracy that this patient lacks vitamin C. There is a way an individual can behave. You can know immediately that there are things that are not in place. An obsession to be known. It doesn't matter who is pushed away. No. When you know Jesus and you love him, it is an honor to represent him. Whether in ministry, whether in business. Can I be honest with you? The dominion that we have in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. We, our dominion is shared dominion. You want to understand how shared dominion works? Look at the moon and the sun. The moon does not have any light of its own, but it still glows. It glows to the degree to which it aligns to the sun. None of us have any power of our own, grace of our own. Everything we have is derived from what we have received. And let me tell you this. Everybody, and I encourage preachers, we must be unashamed to let the world know how helpless we are without him. It is good that people honor us. It is good that people bless us. But please, for God's sake, let them know that Jesus is the one who is Lord. To see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 listen i can tell you this until we get to a point where our encounter with god produces genuine brokenness 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 that brings you to a point where your obsession is to see Jesus revealed and see Jesus glorified that is it that becomes the anthem the motto for your life why are you in business more than just making money to see Jesus revealed to see Jesus glorified why are you in ministry dear man of God more than wanting to show that God called me that is an inferior reason to be in ministry And I was taken to a valley that once had a great army. What happened? Could it be that if the army kept focus on the one who gave them life, they would not deteriorate to become bones? The first thing we see from these bones is there must have been rebellion from the life source. If the voice could bring them back, then it meant that voice was what would keep them alive. They lost touch with the voice. That's why they became bones. Oh, may I never get to a point where I make people believe that outside of God, by my will, I can bless and lift people. Joshua Selman does not have that power. Everything you see is derived from our relationship with God. Let's return back to the foundational truths. Otherwise, we are going to destroy our children and our children's children. They will not even know what they are called into. Please sit down. Can these bones live again? The answer is yes. If they pay attention to the voice that once gave them life. Can I be honest with you? There is a difference between pride. Pride and confidence. Your confidence is acknowledging that which God has graciously made you become through Christ. And the Bible says, don't cast it away. 
Because it has a great recompense of reward. But there is pride. You know what pride is? Pride is coming to a point where you become vocal through your life and through your voice that there is no government above you. The moment you get to that point, the devil does not need to attack you. You are finished. The very justice system of God is what will judge you. Are we learning something tonight? Please hear me. Many of us, younger people in ministry, let me encourage you sincerely. Never fight the body, but be careful who you listen to. Many of us have listened to, and, and it doesn't have to be bad people. No. I can be a sincere person loving you with all my heart, but if I ask you to enter a car and I cannot drive, you and all your children and your wife and your entire family, sincerity may not take you to your destination. The absence of genuine encounters. Do you know when God called me, and I'm sure that Apostle Felix will tell you and many other people, when God, when I started my work with God, SAS, it was never about ministry. I never even knew. Most of the people God is marvelously using today, ask them how many times they ran away from the call of God. They didn't want all that trouble. They said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I just want to love you and to serve you. And God said, I have called you. But right now, please look at me. Look at me. I'm preaching to Africa. We need to return back to our passion. Ministry can become idolatry if God is out of it. Business can become idolatry if God is out of it. Genuine encounters with God. Gone are the days where people will lock themselves for one week and just say, Lord, I want to know you. I'm not looking for power for a conference. It is you I'm looking for. No. No. We didn't study our Bibles just because we were looking for sermons. No, no. We truly, genuinely, desperately wanted him. Let's go back and re-examine ourselves. He told Cain and Abel, he said, if you have done it right, will I not accept it? Society today is sadly a reflection of the carelessness and the nonchalance of the church. While we slept, Satan came in and planted all kinds of things. The question again is, can these bones live? You have heard it in my teachings. You celebrated me so graciously when I came. Thank God for your apostle, the man of God and his dear wife. Thank God for all the servants of God. But I want you to look at me. Behind this man you see, there is absolutely nothing out of the mercy of God. Listen, this is not an expression of weakness. When you make statements like this, you are very powerful. It was weakness that kills strength. When you see strength, beware, strength is not very strong. Weakness is what kills strength on the cross. When the anointing of the spirit comes upon you and finds strength, it goes back. It must find you incapacitated in yourself that God becomes your completion. Listen to me. Let our altars and our pulpit once again become platforms for salvation. Let our messages once again, among the many things that we teach, do not teach as if sinners are no longer coming. It is good to mature and build people. But while you teach the different dimensions of the kingdom, still go back and remember, one sinner came to church today. Who needs to encounter Jesus? And if that sinner does not encounter Jesus, that will be the entrance point of evil in that church. They are the ones who tomorrow will be appointed positions because of longevity in the church without encounter.
Please pay attention. Genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, let me rush for sake of time. So three factors we're examining tonight that have been responsible for the current state of the church and by extension the nation as seen prophetically in the vision of Ezekiel. Number one, the absence of genuine encounter with the Lord. Number two, very quickly. Ready for number two? Very low level of discipleship. Oh, this is a concept you do not hear again in the body of Christ. Younger believers don't even know what this is. What is discipleship? Discipleship is the methodical approach. A scriptural and methodical approach to growth and maturity as far as spiritual things are concerned. The name, the doctrinal name given to the pathway that leads an individual who comes into Christ to now grow and have stature and maturity is discipleship. Discipleship is not a religious thing. People have made religion out of it, I understand. But intrinsically, discipleship is the methodical approach. Please look up. Did you know that the growth and the maturity of the saints was not supposed to be guesswork? Um, do we have any medical doctor here? Please stand, sir. Do we have any other medical doctor here? Any at all? Thank you. Did you by any means go to the same college of medicine with that lady? You're not sure. Now, how come both of you or all of you can accurately do the same thing even though you've never met yourselves because of the formula that was used to train you? You didn't have to know yourselves. That means the manual is greater than the lecturers that taught you. So although you were from one region and you were from one region, but both of you are called doctors and you can actually meet for the first time in a surgery room and not doubt yourselves because of the dexterity of the manual that was used to train you. Now, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. How come when I call a man Christian A, stand up. Christian B, stand up. Christian C, stand up. And all three come to sit down. You cannot even understand what they are discussing. So what is wrong? There must be, we have to probe into the manual that has been used for that training. Or we have to probe into the sincerity of the lecturer. Please sit down. Please pay attention. There is, listen, there is a cause content that is given for the maturity of the believers. And it is not an invention of any preacher. The cause content that has already been predefined to make any believer become mature, the name of that cause content is doctrine. Doctrine is the cause content allocated for the building and the maturity of the saints. Doctrine comes from the Latin word doctrina. It means a, a, a predefined body of knowledge that helps the student become something exact. Doctrina, a body of knowledge. Now, respectfully speaking, what happens... Now, remember, we agreed that all our teaching is not to point fingers. If you are pointing fingers at anybody, you are not part of us in this conference now. You have to understand. There is no tell them. We are all a family of faith. Very matured, very intelligent people who are as one body helping to solve what is wrong with that body. Please sit down. Are you learning? See, let me teach you something. The zenith of transformation is not enlightenment. It is love. We know you are most transformed not through the communication of knowledge alone. If your knowledge grows as your love depletes, it is not the Holy Spirit who is responsible for that building. Because if God builds you, the more you know, the more your love life rises to match your revelation. So that you dispense the truths that you know from a standpoint of love. The love factor is what validates that God taught you. 
be learning all these things. This is a conference. Discipleship. Second Timothy chapter 3. My goodness. Wherever we stop tonight, we'll share the grace and come tomorrow. This is a school of the spirit. Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. Very quickly if we can. Second Timothy. And that from a child. Everybody say child. So you are supposed to begin to learn the ways of God from a child. If you become an adult before you start, time is already against you. You have to create extra lessons to quickly because what you need to learn, you need to learn it on time. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture. Are we together? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. To 17 now. All Scripture, he's still talking to that child, is given by God. By inspiration of God and is profitable for, please talk to me, for first doctrine before reproof. There cannot be reproof and correction when there is no basis. The basis is doctrine. Then from the lens of doctrine, we can now adjust the excesses. The excesses, correcting, the, this is why, let me balance this. Oh dear, we have other sessions. Let me not, please pray for me that we just... Do you know, maybe this may be a word from God to just help someone tonight. Not everybody has the grace to correct the body of Christ. Just because you see things going wrong does not mean you just stand up and start talking. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Listen. This is South Africa. Do you just go as a citizen and arrest anybody for doing wrong? There is an authorized system. Is that true? Licensed. And when they come, the first thing they show you is their license. Do you know what your license is? There is a requisite level of love you must have for the body. If not, you will never be given the grace to correct that body. You cannot correct the body from a standpoint of antagonism, from a standpoint of bitterness. Your motive is already corrupted yourself. Everybody say discipleship. discipleship. Please shout it. Say discipleship. discipleship. Do you know why the educational systems in most of our top universities globally work? Harvard, Yale, Oxford. Do you know why? Because they insist on maintaining standards of what is being taught. They have all kinds of quality control systems that they will not bend to. So you can trust the products that come out from there. The primary reason why the educational systems, respectfully speaking, in Africa continue to plunge is because there is no insistence on, there is no standardization. So all kinds of compromises can come. That is how it is spiritually. Can I be honest with you? When you understand doctrine, you see, the thing about spiritual growth and knowledge is that believers do, do not just learn anything spiritual to grow. There is a sequence. When a believer comes to Christ and gets born again, the next thing to teach that believer, doctrinally speaking, is not success. If you teach that person success from that standpoint, you have only given the flesh what to manifest. That person will most likely not last. That person needs to understand the rudiments of godliness, repentance from dead works, the power of character. Now, when you teach that person, by the time you come into the series on success, there is already a background. He knows you have tamed the flesh. So, the teaching on success now comes to a mature believer who understands the purpose of influence, the purpose of wealth. We cannot randomly teach anything just because we find it from scripture. Look at me, please. Again, let me use an example with our educational system. Assume with me, for instance, that you find a student in the university, in college. Today, you run to the faculty of engineering for lecture. Tomorrow you run to the faculty of medicine or the college of medicine. Next tomorrow you go to arts. 
Are you in the university? Yes. Will you graduate? Because your knowledge is not methodical. You are in the system, but you are not growing. When they award you a certificate or a degree, it's because you have stayed in keeping with the, the sequence of the growth across a field of study. They don't give you degree for everything. They give you degree for the field that you chose to stay on course for. Listen to me. Apostle Felix, if an average believer is called right now at random, let's call an average believer who has been in church for say two years, three years, five years, and you stand here and we interview you based on the foundational doctrines of scripture, you will be surprised and even weep that the average believer does not even have an under... What do you know about prayer? What do you know about salvation? Can I get someone saved and hand him over to you and say, I will return back in two years. I should meet a general. I should meet a champion. Do you know how to... What is the next course? Are we blessed? Yes. That's why after this conference, you should come to meet your man of God and hug him and say, thank you, sir. Thank you for giving an opportunity for the body of Christ, not only in South Africa, but across. Can I be honest with you? Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. Every family problem was first a problem that was not solved by the church, which is the light. Nothing starts at a national level. Everything only manifests at a national level. It is very easy to change a territory. You change a nation by changing regions, by changing communities, by changing families, by working on the church. Africa is about the most religious continent across the globe. Am I right on that? And can I be honest with you? The average church in Africa attends, has at least contacts with a spiritual leader once or twice every week. If what we are producing is not bringing glory to the name of the Lord, there must be an unashamed examination. Let's examine the course content. Let's examine the state of the lecturer. First, there are other issues, but they are not as powerful as we make them. Satan knows this, and he will do anything to keep us arguing and fighting one another, addressing the issues that are the obvious, but not the right ones. Doctrine. I've had the honor of praying for many institutions and many businesses and many companies. And for some of them, I see the dexterity around their administrative system. When I came in here, the excellence of your protocol, I saw all of the people, uh, 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 wonderful, your, your, your whole reception team here. Do you know why these people are like that? They are trained. They didn't guess their way on what to do. Now, watch this. Everybody, please watch this. Please look up if you can find it. Who asked him to come? Who asked him to come and pick it? Why didn't you come? Do you not love your pastor? Why didn't you come? It's not your jurisdiction. You were trained. Are you seeing this now? Anytime there is no training, there will be disorder. I just threw this arbitrarily and he knows I put pressure on his office and his training. Now his ability to do this has proven that this man is a good shepherd. Please sit down. I was glad. Thank you. When they said unto me, you see why it's really, this should be the basis of your confidence when you invite people to church. You invite them with this passion, knowing that just one service. You see that now? And you tell them, please come to the house of God. You will find wisdom there. Listen, 
the church should not be or look like a nuisance to civilization. No. The contents that we give are profitable always. It's not just the spiritual lives of the people. We communicate ideas that transform people and eventually help people to build the nation. The church is not just some spiritual nuisance. No. We are a blessing to everybody. We are the principal shapers of the spiritual convictions of any territory. So there is a serious discipleship problem. We must examine the things that we teach. Hebrews chapter 6 talks to us about the doctrinal pillars of the Christian faith. Doctrinal pillars. Six of them it lists. And then it says let us go on into perfection. Not laying again the foundation of doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection, eternal judgment, etc. Hallelujah. We must be methodically built. Number three, let me hurry up for time. What is the third factor that is responsible for the decadence of the church like prophetically seen in the vision of Ezekiel? Are you ready for this? Number three, is that there are few models or references few models in certain territories there are almost no models few models or references that can inspire people and show people pragmatically how to be a christian can i tell you this every territory strives to the degree to which they find models that reflect their aspirations. Business people excel because there are individuals who are seen as models. When a territory does not have models, men and women who have paid the price to become worthy references that you can draw from their lives the inspiration to continue, you can literally use their lives as a marking script to correct yourself as you move. The Bible says, woe to a city whose king is a child. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The absence of worthy references and models that ye be not slothful, but followers of them. Followers of them. So you follow he. The money can use the image of an individual to help you and say it is possible. Keep moving. Don't bend. That a man can prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity and still move forward. When your life is, when you are prayerless, the Holy Ghost can use the face of someone. Question, how many models are in Africa? that can be used but because there was no one who had done it there was no model to create inspiration many people believed and someone did it and someone did it now you go and check the records how many people have climbed many many business people usually when you find a territory that has one businessman that rises becomes a global voice now he can become a reference they can follow his footsteps. Can I tell you this? Until we find solid Christians in South Africa, in Africa, Christians indeed. There will be a very major problem. And if you have only one or two or three people, that reference is too small. You need many people. There is a reason why Jesus came and gathered 12 people. Gathered 72. Gathered 120. He said, I am making you witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention over that claim. It's amazing. That in Ezekiel 37, as I attempt to round up for tonight, when God said, can these bones live? The prophet said, only thou knowest. 
And he said, prophet, if I speak alone, even though the bones are hearing me, they will not come. I need you. Repeat what I have said. I am God, but I designed the system that as far as it has to do with the earth, there must be a man who will echo what I'm saying. And he said unto me, the Bible did not say, and he said, he said unto someone, this is what I desire, but I need you to make it happen. Prophesy. So this is one of the strategies for the restoration of decadence. The power of words and the power of information. The Bible tells us that in this kingdom, men live through food and words. Food and words. Prophesy to these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, don't lie about it. If they are dry, tell them they are dry. You will come back to life, but first admit you are dry bones. And then he says, O ye dry bones, I have diagnosed your condition, but there is hope. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, can I tell you this? In the midst of all the things that are happening in the body of Christ. In the midst of all that we see across Africa and society. Let me bring you a word of comfort. Do not make a mistake of believing that the church is dead or finished. No. I can tell you there is a formula. There is a strategy that can bring that dead church back to life. Amen. South Africa, hear me. The church in this nation and the church across Africa is in a very defining moment. There are all kinds of shifts happening, but find rest. Jesus is still the best. brother indeed. Because we would have laid aside all of these attributes of the flesh. And God would have walked and built us. You ask about the next move of God. He's asking you, can these bones leave? Can these bones leave? Please hear me. In the book of Jonah chapter 1, the first two or three verses talk about God giving Jonah an instruction to go to Nineveh. Jonah was so hot and angry, he ran away until he entered into the belly of the fish. Are we together? When he came out in repentance and brokenness, Chapter 3 from verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him again. Please give us Jonah 3 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go to Africa, that great city. God still calls a place that needs repentance a great city. Oh, come on. Someone did not see a prophetic word there. Africa, I know we have gone through a lot. Yes, sir. Politically, economically, spiritually. I know you may have been disappointed in we the men of God here and there. But can I tell you, hear what the Lord still calls Africa. That great continent. That great nation, South Africa. Now you understand why I started the way I started. If he says it. He will do it. So if he has called Africa the great nation, I want to tell you this. Africa will arise again. Hmm. But what is the call? I'm wrapping up. Ephesians 5.14 Three quick verses. I want to do something prophetic tonight. Now please pay attention. I'm going to read these three verses. Prophetically. Um, I saw Colin. He's the one I know. That my man. Where is he? He's gone. Yes. 
you will do me something here when I read these three verses. Please permit my bias. But I want you to sing for me the national anthem of South Africa. Amen. Hallelujah. Prophetically, it's a chauffeur to the realm of the spirit that from house of treasures, there are bones. Did he not say as when I prophesied, I had a sound. Can I tell you this? The blood of many have gone for the gospel. Many today have died. Some of you in ministry do not even know the history of the move of God within your region. It didn't come at a platter of gold. Go and study church history. People cried. They lost their lives. Missionaries came. Some died. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. South Africa, hear the prophetic word. Ministries, business people. Hear what the Lord is saying. Wherefore he saith, it is true that you want to see the next move of God. It is true that the bones can live, but not under any condition. Here is what God is asking you to do. Man of God, businessman, politician, awake thou that sleepest. Awake from that spiritual slumber. Don't give excuses. You will not birth glory that way. Awake. Awake. Some of you need to go back to ministry 101. Some of you need to go back to Christianity 101. And say, honestly, I've not gotten this thing right. I need to make it right. Second scripture. Very quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel. Very quickly. We're out of time. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. 3, 0, 2 and verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now, the Lord said, be it far from me. Listen, South Africa, another word for you from the Lord. For them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me, go and read through history. Any region, individual, nation, continent that ever despises God is a matter of time. For you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You, one more time. You are God, say, you are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Second Chronicles chapter 7, popular scripture. That has been used by revivalists from verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. Second Chronicles 7. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locust to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. Please read with me in concert. Ready? Read. If, hold on. He's talking to his people. This instruction is not to strangers. They are his people. If my people, which are called by my name, number one, we're looking at the protocol for restoration. Number one, they shall humble themselves. Lord, I accept as an individual. I do not know you. I accept the mistakes that I've made. As a parent, as a pastor, as a leader. There is one thing I know about God. You can use brokenness 
to attract the attention of God. For as long as we continue to act like a people who know what we are doing, even in the midst of our confusion, God will leave us to continue in our pride. He looks for people who are genuinely broken. I don't know about you, but I have learned to come unashamed before God. When I come before him, I don't come as Apostle Joshua Selman. That's nonsense. Your boy is still here. The one you lifted. The one you took from nothing. Oh God, I am still here. Thank God for the applause of kings and nobles. But may I ever remain that child before you. God is speaking to someone here. We are wrapping up. Humble themselves. Please give us that scripture. Number two, and pray. What kind of prayer do you think you will pray in this occasion? Prayer of genuine repentance. Not some prideful prayer and saying, God, I'm putting my hand in my pocket as your colleague. I, I've been waiting for you. No, sir. Brokenness. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I'm showing you a formula. Bones, if you will come back, you must be willing to listen again. It was your lack of listening that depleted you. The prodigal son, for as long as he was under the influence of his father's voice, he experienced so much. When he left and there was no more voice, he depleted till he began to feed with swine. Let's finish up. And seek my face more than money. I believe in prosperity. Oh. Don't confuse what I'm teaching now. I believe in prosperity and its ability to help to give you a life of comfort and to advance the purposes of God. But I love you more than it. Oh, they don't know what you mean to me. They don't know what you mean to me. How could I exalt money more than him? How could I exalt ministry more than him? Where were these things when the devil was almost destroying me? Can I? Listen, God is speaking to us tonight. Some of you, this may be the reason why you have not seen the power and the grace of God. You love him, but how much? Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Please, let's finish up. And turn from your wicked ways. If you pray and don't turn, you are still a sinner. The prodigal son said, how he came to himself. Africa, let's come to ourselves. If we want to fulfill that prophetic word of being that continent that will return Christ back. I'm speaking to world over. The world. But please permit my bias passionately communicating this to our dear continent. Africa was now feeding with swine. And Africa said, I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here today feeding with swine. I will arise. I cannot change myself, but I can go to where change will happen. I may not be able to save myself, but I can come to church. I may not have the power to drive those demons, but I can come to a man of God who has been graced. He said, I will arise and I will go back to my father. I'm showing you repentance. Repentance requires action. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the moment he was leaving his place of decadence, the father too was leaving his house. They met somewhere on the way. Can I tell you this? The greatness you are looking for is also looking for you. But he's not looking for the rebel that is at that place. He's looking for the one on his way back. Businessman, hear me. You have tried everything you know to do. It's a spiritual problem. It's not just a financial problem. You have too many friends who would have brought you out. There is a hand that you are against.
Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. South Africa, please stand. Africa Malu Paganisu Pondo Layo Israimitandazo Yetu Abuja, Nigeria, Apostle. Apostle Felix Oko is the general overseer and senior pastor of House of Treasures.
pray that prayer now. Africa, live again. South Africa, live again. Nigeria, live again. Zimbabwe, live again. Malawi, live again. Is someone prophesying? We are declaring, live again. Live again. Out of the ashes of our decadence, live again. The church is praying, live again. Putting aside our denominational barriers, we come as a people who love Jesus and we speak all oh, dry bones, leave again, leave again. In politics, leave again. In business, leave again. Economically, leave again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let our children begin to call upon the name of the Lord again. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore him Seth. And men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Cry before him. Cry before him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please listen carefully. Apologize for the stretch. But the last thing I'm going to do here tonight. There are people scattered inside. And probably the other halls that have been put. We cannot end this conference. Without giving you room. To make it genuinely right with Jesus. More than a church goer. More than a bearer. Please stand if you can of Christian names. I apologize for the stretch, but this is the protocol that restores the ark. If it is God we desire to see again in our land. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. All those who are not within this auditorium, when the altar call is made, please officials, if you can just show them somewhere they can stand, so we still respect the principles um, as far as um, gatherings and all of that is concerned but for those who are in this hall hearing me preach you're saying apostle I need Jesus desperately as a matter of life and death Christianity is nothing without him or you are here and you are saying I remember giving my life to Jesus but sincerely my life has gone haywire and right now I do not even know what I stand for I need restoration and revival these two groups of people without having to bump on yourselves please come gently and I want you to come and stand at the aisles here I'm going to count one to five please do that quickly if you are still thinking about it sit down on your seat but if you are here and you mean it sincerely please don't pretend this is Jesus some of you are crying. One, please come to Jesus. Please come to Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. I'm going to hold the hands of your man of God and we're going to be praying for you. You don't have to kneel for, for space. Listen, Jesus said this. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you are crying. You are before him, Jesus. <laughs> The one who can save to the uttermost. In your salvation is the salvation of your children. In your salvation. It says for this promise is unto you. 
and your children and your children's children. As many as are far off, even those that the Lord himself will call. Those of you who are in front, please lift your right hand high to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I have heard your word. I've heard your word. I believe, I believe that, you are that you are the Son of God. The Son of God. I, believe I believe that you died for me. That you died. I believe, I believe that you rose again, that you rose again for, my justification. for my justification. Tonight, Tonight I, receive you I receive you as my Lord, as my, Lord my, Savior, my Savior, and my King. No going back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please keep those hands lifted. Your pastor, your apostle, the shepherd, and your father is going to make a declaration over you. And when he makes that declaration, if there is a place you go to, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm sure that there would be a group of counselors or maybe a card given to you. Or if there is no provision like that, whenever we call for those who have made this altar call, please do avail yourself so that there will be a group of people who can follow you up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for each and every one of these souls. Father, the scripture says there is a rejoicing in heaven mm. over the salvation of one soul. Therefore, Father, we thank you for this great harvest. Father, upon their confession in our Lord Jesus, in the resurrection, and Father, we now declare as a church, the scripture says, whosoever sins will remit is remitted. We declare, therefore, that their sins are forgiven. The grace that brought them out here will preserve them in the kingdom. And Father, we decree that unto the coming of our Lord Jesus, everyone here will make it to heaven. We destroy every curse in your life and I speak the blessing of Abraham into your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare you blessed in Jesus' precious name. And everybody say, Amen. Now quickly, you are just going to follow. There is a lady right there. Please follow them. We just need to take your name and your phone number so we can keep in touch with you to help you maintain this decision. What a great harvest of soul. We celebrate all of you. Please, can you just follow them quickly? Just follow them. It's just going to be a short while. Follow them and you'll be back into the service. You, they will give you an uh, an information form, fill it out quickly. Please help them, help them. Please fill it out quickly. Help them, help them. Some people can go through this way. Can somebody direct them this way? Please don't go back to your seats. Just follow them, obey instruction. So you can write down your names and your phone number and we'll be able to follow up with you and help you to maintain this decision. Please, church, one more time, give them a clap offering. Let's celebrate them. Hallelujah. Now, before I take my seat, I understand there is a session. Remember, you can see already the wind of revival is blowing. Amen. Please let me encourage you. Let this conference be a moment of retreat for yes, you. Sir. Enter a covenant with yourself that you're not going to miss any of the sessions left. People have traveled from everywhere. We have a session tomorrow. We'll continue from here. And by the grace of God, tomorrow evening will be a miracle service. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Praise name of the Lord. God. Hallelujah. I have obtained permission from your man of God to allow everybody, please write down everything that has threatened the name of the Lord over your life. Mm. For you and for your loved ones. Yes, sir. I'd like you to bring it here. By the grace of God, fire will fall from heaven upon this place. We are going to be standing, listen to me, we are going to be standing under a corporate anointing 
all the servants of God and we're going to trust God that in the name of Jesus, there will be such a supernatural flow of, of solutions over the lives of people. Amen. Now, please, I'd like you to encourage, even for those who, for any reason, may not be able to make it here, they can follow um, on, on all the platforms yes. that are available. The most important thing is that they connect because God is speaking to individuals, to families, to communities, to this nation, this continent, and indeed across the globe. So please make sure that everyone is part of this. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name. Please, why don't you celebrate this great servant of God? <laughs> As they celebrate Apostle Joshua Selman. There is a revival in the land. You see, every genuine revival starts with repentance. I think I made that statement on the first. I, I can't remember when I made that statement. Every genuine revival starts with genuine repentance. And tonight, I tell you, men of God, when we were kneeling down, I felt fire all over me. Something, something has broken loose in this nation. Something has broken. I tell you, something major has broken in the realm of the spirit. And church, he had to start this way so that we can build on a solid foundation. Because you see, it is so, it's, it's, it's crazy. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed